Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer bringing you Mail Monday. Mail Monday is a series where I take a look at your um, YouTube messages, twi tweets, uh, YouTube comments, etc. and the reply. So let's get started. The first letter is about PC gamers. Um, on Painkiller already, I mentioned that um, uh, PC gamers tend to switch games less frequently than console gamers. That console gamers are pretty psyched to get a new game every six months, maybe even more often than that. I mean, I, they fuss at me for still playing Black Ops and the game's only seven months old. Um, whereas on uh, PC gamers, they tend to say the pl play the same game for years. And uh, I thought that was interesting, and I, I, can, I guessed that it was because on the PC, there's no real assurance that your next game is going to run smoothly and easily, and, and you, maybe you stick to the same game because you have the same PC. And uh, um, this guy wrote a really great letter which, was, which said this, Probably the biggest reason is the way servers work. As you know, in PC games, you don't just go into a matchmaking screen and throws you in a lobby. You choose a server from a list based on map and server side. Most PC gamers get kind of attracted to their servers and get to know the regulars who play there. And I think that knowing people who, no, people knowing who you are when you join a lobby is one of the biggest reasons they stick around. And that made total sense to me because, um, you know, as a console gamer, I tend to play with my friends a lot. And, and, you know, the people in the game are as much an attraction for me as the game itself. So, uh, you know, to hear that, oh, yeah, one of the reasons PC gamers stick to their game is that, you know, they know the guys in, on that server and, and, you know, cue the cheer song here, you know, where everybody knows your name. I totally get that. I can see why they would stick to a game, uh, not just for the game itself, but for the people around. And uh, yeah, so, so that makes perfect sense to me. And I appreciate the letter. Oh, oh, another thing I wanted to ask. I was considering getting the PC version of um, Battlefield. You know, one of the biggest problems with Battlefield is that uh, uh, the frames per second is only 30, and the controls, at least in the console world, are often considered clunky you know, compared to um, Modern Warfare. Now, these problems both are fixed on the PC version of Battlefield. And I was wondering, you know, hey, how important is it to you guys, especially you console gamers, that, um, you know, your commentator plays this on the same system that you do? Like, does it matter to you or, um, or not? So, uh, you know, I imagine most of the tactics and strategies are roughly the same. I just like to know, you know, if I were to play the PC version, would that be a turnoff for you guys? Do you prefer that I play on Xbox or, um, or you don't really care at all? So leave a comment, please. I, I'd, I'd be interested in your feedback. All right, so here's a different girl problem, and I won't uh, read the entire letter to you because it's fairly long, but let's sum it up. Uh, he's going to college next year, going to university, which implies to me maybe he's a European. And um, he and his girlfriend have been dating for a while, but they're not going to the same place. But the one that she's attending is 20 minutes by car, not that big of a deal. Um, his ex-girlfriend has told him that her ex-boyfriend, you know, the, the boyfriend before him, uh, had broken her heart. Well, he's back in the picture because... Uh, her main group of friends includes this guy, her ex-boyfriend. And uh, now the two of them are going to be working this summer at, uh, at at a summer camp for two months. And he's not going to be around there. And uh, her and her ex-boyfriend are going to the same college or university because they're, they're European. And... Um, and they're going to be taking classes together, which I don't know how big a fear that is, but whatever. And um, uh, he's just in a really tough spot because he's totally in love with this girl. She's the best part of his life. And, um, you know, he's uh, threatened by her ex-boyfriend being back in the picture. This is a really tough spot, right? This ex-boyfriend, uh, if he is making a move on your girl has a lot of, you know, logistical advantages over you in terms of, you know, being able to see this girl. And, and, and we know that uh, that she liked him at least once before. That That's a problem, too. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's a really tough thing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, what can you do? And there isn't a lot, you know, if you grab her too tightly, if you grab anyone too tightly, a friend or, or your girlfriend or whatever, then uh, it can make them want to pull away. And that's a problem. If, uh, if um, you know, you, you don't grab tightly at all, and it allows them to slip away. And that's an issue, too. As I thought about this, and I've given it some thought, I think what you need to do is just talk to her about it and talk to her about it. You know, let her know that you need some reassurance. Let her know that, uh, see that BS death? That was my first death of the game. Let her know that, um, uh, you know, you're going through a tough time. You're concerned about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend and, uh, and that, uh, you know, that you need some reassurance that everything is going to be okay and that you're still her man. And, uh, if she's if she's a good girlfriend, if she does this right, 
then she goes out of her way to make you feel like you're number one and, uh, you know, just deals with your fears a little bit. Um, if she, you know, pushes back and, and doesn't want to address your concerns, then that's bad behavior. And, uh, you know, it implies that, that as a girlfriend, she could use improvement. So, um, yeah, so that's what I was thinking. I, I feel for you, man, that you got thrown into a spot with some tough logistics, but, um, you know, if she's a good woman, then she'll make you feel good about it and everything will be okay. So I wish you luck. Um, this is a, a super tough one. So, uh, so young man, 16 years old. Um, he's an English student sitting for exams, which I know is really stressful over there. Um, his father and his mother are having arguments because uh, his father's been unfaithful twice. Once when he was younger, when he was six, and a second time last year uh, when he was 15. And, uh, and he's angry at his father for this. He writes he felt like punching him in the nose. Uh, this time, or just lately, uh, his mom and his, and his dad are arguing because he has a gig with his band on New Year's Eve. And, um, uh, you know, they, they worry about, you know, how, the, how this is going to go, the, 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 the guy who wrote this letter, you know, the subscriber, isn't old enough to see his father play at this place, and uh, so it, it's pretty much his father not being with the family on New Year's Eve, you know, which in itself is a tricky spot. I, um, I don't know how to say this gently, right? It, your father's having a midlife crisis. <laughs> you know, your father is sitting there, you know, taking uh, inventory of his life and wondering, you know, if things are going right or not. He's... He's wondering, you know, like he wishes he was the rocker. He wishes that uh, that he had this like single life freedom. And um, if he's anything like like most married guys, uh, he absolutely loves uh, his family. He absolutely loves his kids and, and, and wouldn't trade him for the world. But, uh, you know, he wishes that he could have it all. He, he wishes that, that he could have the kind of freedom that allows him to, you know, go play gigs on New Year's Eve and, you know, do all sorts of, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever strikes his fancy, women, for example. And he wishes that he could have, you know, the family unit. You know, he, he wants his cake and he wants to eat it too. And uh, a lot of guys have a really hard time dealing with, you know, the limitations that marriage puts on you. Now, marriage is a really great thing, but, um, but not if you're unwilling to live within the confines of marriage. So uh, th that's where he is. It's not about you, you know. I, I would bet big money that, um, you know, not having the, the time with you would be the hardest thing he'd ever dealt with. But um, uh, on, on the other hand, you know, he, he seems to, from the outside, it looks like he feels handcuffed by, by the married life and that uh, he's struggling with it. And, um, you know, what your father really needs to do is figure out what's right for him and not keep his family in limbo because, uh, because of the pain that stuff like this causes you. So, uh, good luck, man. Uh, I wish I could do more. All right. And lastly, I'm going to talk about two videos that you may have missed. Uh, one is a subscriber paintball event. So what we're doing is we're going to Joliet, in Illinois. It's right outside Chicago. And we're playing paintball with subscribers. It's going to be super cool. We've done this before. It's worked out really well. And uh, it's just an incredible weekend of some sun, some sports, some, some good food, and some good times with good people. So uh, check out that video if you're all interested in playing um, paintball. FPS Russia, Mercadurka, me, K-pop, paintball, paintball kitty, the aviator, T-Mart, more and more and more. Tons of guys are going, and uh, it should be a great time. The other is uh, the commentator showdown. So I gave an update on that. I actually talked to Sandy Ravage last night. He hasn't been playing a lot of Black Ops lately, but I think I might get him to uh, to play. Uh, if you guys uh, help me, persuade him, you know, send him some messages. <laughs> Let him know that you'd love to see him in the commentator showdown and, and put us in our place, then that would be awesome. So uh, um, there's two videos I put up lately. Uh, pick one and enjoy.